Today, I will talk about a truck that was completely developed by Soviet engineers, inspired all of the third generation trucks of the Moscow automobile plant, won medals from international competitions and got a reputation. It was the first indigenous army type medium class truck capable of carrying 3.5 tons while working on the ground. It could carry up to 5 tons of cargo on asphalt roads. Manufactured for 34 years, the Zil 131 became the main truck of the Soviet Army and formed the basis of an extensive truck tree list. The idea to manufacture this truck was introduced in 1956. But it took almost 10 years for it to achieve perfection and go into mass production. The part that made things difficult was the V8 engine unit. This is why the first Zil 131A, it had a 135 horsepower V6 engine. It also needed parts from the ZIS-151 and ZIL-157K machines. As a result of these combinations, a second ZIL-131 with 2.5 tons, hybrid, 6-cylinder and 125 HP was developed. It was called ZIL-165. Later, in 1959, a third ZIL-131 with a 148 horsepower V8 engine was produced and formed the basis of the future ZIL trucks. The process of creating the ZIL-131 ended in 1966 and only one year later the truck went into mass production. Perfect for the time, it had a 150 horsepower V8 engine, protected electrical equipment, ball joint front wheel drive, power steering, tire pressure control, panoramic windshield, and an all-metal cabin. Some models even had a crane mounted in front of them. During the mass production process, the ZIL-131 has been continuously improved. Equipped with new units and small parts. But its external features never changed. In April 1974, the state honorary quality mark was awarded. Basic model development, it was a shortened frame truck tow model for towing semi-trailers weighing 12 tons on the highway and 7.5 tons on the dirt road. At the end of the 1970s they wanted to switch to a new military model. With a 170 horsepower multi-fuel V8 engine, an elongated hood and a forward-facing model, it became the Zil 131M. But this attempt was unsuccessful. We can say that the first models in the series were produced for the national economy. The military version came out three years after it was manufactured and was equipped with the appropriate units for military specifications. But five years later, it began to position itself as a simplified tool for the civilian economy. The classic 131 was mass-produced for 20 years until 1986. Later Zil 131N was developed. In addition, this version received better engine, better economic parameters, a synthetic awning and modern optics. In 1986, economical Zil 131 NS with a carrying capacity of 3.75 tons and an upgraded 150 horsepower engine started to come off the production line. It had single headlight blocks towards the outside, signal indicators on the front fenders and an awning bought from Commas. This is the most successful model of the 131 family, it was in high demand in the Soviet Union and entered the armies of the socialist neighbor countries. All versions of Zil 131 completed production in 1990. Military Options and Equipment Zil 131, it was used in the Soviet armed forces and in the armies of other countries to transport 18 to 24 people on transverse benches, to install small and medium caliber artillery systems, to establish small army bases. Dimming headlights, stands for personal weapons, night vision systems, military map system boxes were installed on these trucks. Lattice frames for missiles were installed in some countries. In the 1980s, Military Facility 38 produced a prototype version of the Zil 131N truck to transport troops during the cold season. It has a chimney mounted between the cabin and the insulated body and is equipped with an independent ventilation unit. 131B series military trucks, usually operated in conjunction with a standard one or two axle semi-trailer developed by order of the Ministry of Defense. It was used to transport large cargo, bridge sections, or bridge equipments. 
Initially, the ZIL-131 was installed on standard Army Kung 1M hulls in various versions. At the end of the 60s when the production of military minibuses started, sloping flat roofs, viewing windows, life support systems and airtight metal doors started to be produced for ZIL-131. With these equipment, crew members could fulfill their duties by staying in extreme high and low temperatures, under radioactive contamination conditions for a long time. The protected chassis of the ZIL-131, it was used to house various radio communication systems, radar, reconnaissance systems, and command control systems. The radio towers, reaching a height of 20 meters, were equipped with various antennas, cable coil sets and self-electric gasoline systems that it can use during combat. 60s and 70s period, the brightest days were considered for Soviet mobile radars of various capacities and purposes. They were based on the RSP-7T radar produced for the ZIL-157 vehicle and rearranged for the ZIL-131. It was used at airports to examine the movements of aircraft and take off and land in difficult weather conditions. Vehicles produced or modified based on the universal chassis of ZIL-131 are as follows. Fire trucks, fuel trucks, and tankers, airport tankers, airport cleaning vehicles. As a result, built for many years, this truck has proven to be a reliable, durable, and easy-to-maintain truck. Its main advantage is, it is guaranteed to pass through the toughest mud and clay. Although the mass production of this vehicle was completed many years ago, it can even be found today in various sectors of the economy.